have many demonstrations to confute the fancy of those who take space to be of substance, or at least an absolute being. But I shall only use at present one demonstration, which the author here gives me occasion to insist upon. I say, then, that if space was an absolute being, something would happen for which it would be impossible that there should be a sufficient reason which is against my axiom. And I prove it thus. Suppose space is something absolutely uniform, and without the things placed in it, one point of space absolutely does not differ in any respect whatsoever from another point of space. Now from this it follows, supposing space to be something in itself, besides the order of bodies among themselves, that it is impossible there should be a reason why God, preserving the same situations of bodies among themselves, should have placed them in space after one certain particular manner, and not otherwise. Why everything was not placed the quite contrary way, for instance, by changing east into west. But if space is nothing else but this order or relation, and is nothing at all without bodies but the possibility of placing them, then those two states, the one such as it is now, the other, supposed to be the quite contrary way, would not at all differ from one another. Their difference, therefore, is only to be found in our chimerical supposition of the reality of space in itself. But in truth, the one would exactly be the same thing as the other, they being absolutely indiscernible, and consequently there is no room to inquire after a reason for the preference of the one to the other. The case is the same with respect to time. Supposing anyone should ask why God did not create everything a year sooner, and the same person should infer from this that God has done something concerning which it is not possible that there should be a reason why he did it so and not otherwise. The answer is that his inference would be right if time was anything distinct from things existing in time. For it would be impossible that there should be any reason why things should be applied to such particular instance rather than to others, their succession continuing the same. But then the same argument proves that instants, considered without the things, are nothing at all, and that they consist only in the successive order of things. This order remaining the same, one of the two states, namely that of a supposed anticipation, would not at all differ, nor could be discerned from the other, which now is. But then the same argument proves that instants, considered without the things, are nothing at all and that they consist only in the successive order of things. This order remaining the same, one of the two states, namely that of a supposed anticipation, would not at all differ, nor could be discerned from the other, which now is. For Leibniz, Newton's relegation of man to the role of a mere counter and measure of material effects, while lacking the power to act on the universe for the good, left man as a slave, without the power to control his own future. Newton's method masks questions about the physical universe, for example how gravity works, behind numerological magic, which Leibniz properly compared to a medieval occult power. For Leibniz, the idea of space and time is independent, fixed, and absolute, never existed. Rather, it was ideas and principles which could be known and discovered by the mind of man, which created the...